All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I've got some fun stuff for you today. Uh, we are going to go through the Greeble pack again. Uh, we're going to generate a all our textures using the new Z script. I actually just updated it, so the one that I released uh, previously, uh, I have improved upon. Also, there is a slight update to the Greeble pack. No real features or anything added to it. Just a couple fixes in there. Fix the light fixed the uh, one of the tech panels that didn't have any material IDs so all of you that have already downloaded it will receive uh, email and you can download the newest version of it uh, as well as the new Z script and everything so let me take a quick uh, tour of the of the new uh, new version here uh, real quick when you open it up uh, it's now Greeble Pro Pack uh, version 1.1 uh, the generator has been updated to version 1.1 uh, there's a couple new sample objects in here uh, OBJs and ZTLs are the same but the, the OBJs are new uh, these are just a handful of objects that would be that you can take into Substance Designer or Substance Painter or the Quixel suite and you can uh, generate some cool materials that we're going to do today which we'll actually do inside uh, Substance Painter uh, it's probably more practical to do it in Designer but since I don't own it I can't show you how to do it so we're going to do it in a Substance Painter and we'll do it that way uh, also uh, the instructions have been updated they are uh, not in here Interesting. Okay, uh, but I, I did update the instructions. Uh, the Z scripts, uh, quick installation of these. Uh, you have to uh, copy over two folders to your uh, to your startup Pixelog to your uh, ZBrush startup files. Uh, you'll take this Greeble one here and copy him over to to your macros. So it'd be Pixelogic. ZBrush 407, Z Startup, Macros, and then drop in Greeble there. It has uh, the Greeble texture passes in there. And then you want to take the other one, the Greeble plug data, and put it into the ZBrush 407, Z Startup, Z Plugs, and just drop in Greeble plug data. And that is it. And now your texture passes Z script will work. So let's hop in there and I will show you what it's all about. So go ahead and open up your new version of the generator. Version 1.1, 1 .1, 1 .1, however you want to say it. Give it a second to load up. And here is the newest version. Doesn't look a whole lot different. Uh, the uh, there was a problem when I initially shipped everything out the orientation was off like half a degree so uh, that was throwing off your uh, depth maps every time you generated it so that has been fixed in here it really wasn't that hard to fix it was just a matter of doing a shift and orientated it correctly on the canvas and if you're not sure you're 100% orientated, there's a little trick you can do. You can take it off of Edit, click Rotate, go to your Transform, go to Modifiers, actually go to Info, and there you go. All of these should say 000. zero, zero. Uh, the previous version, X was like 0.36, so it was, one, it was less than a half a degree off. So that was messing up your... Uh, your depth map. Everything else worked just fine, but your depth map was off by that uh, half a percent or half a degree. So with that out of the way, let's go back into edit mode here and open up our nano mesh. You've already kind of seen this before, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. Uh, I'm just going to quickly make up a, a new texture real quick. So we'll just go into our tech panels real fast and kind of find one I like or stands out a little bit for me. Nope, I'll do in 
to change it. We'll go to the conduit, change them around a little bit. And if they're going too far in the back, you can always adjust the Z offset, bring them out just a little. Or bring them out way out, it's entirely up to you. And we'll bring them up a little higher there so we can see them. Uh, let's go ahead and go to our miscellaneous one here. And we're going to move him around a little bit. See what we can come up with. We may increase his size just a little bit more. And then just adjust his Z offset. Just a little bit to bring him above a couple things there. And just a little bit more. It's all your personal preference of what you, what you want to what you want it to look like. Me, I'm just I just get a little crazy with it sometimes. So I'm gonna be happy with that there. I may go back to my tech panels a little bit. I can always throw a flip H on there, get or flip V, and see what I come up with. I think I'll be satisfied with that there. Maybe bring our miscellaneous one down just a little bit. Down. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so now if we installed everything correctly, we should have a new, we should have our macro set up. And if you click that, you should see Greeble Texture Passes there. Uh, that Z script was updated, so it works a lot better now. And if you open up your textures, you will start seeing all the textures generated over here as the Z script is going. So I'm going to go ahead and click it. And it's going to take off on the process there. And it will uh, name everything correctly for you. As you can see, it's already generated a depth map. It's going to cycle through all the all the indexes right now and change their change it to uh, material to mesh material. So it may take a minute in this process. Then it'll generate a few more textures for you, and then it'll reset everything back to its original state, and then do uh, a diffuse pass and a shaded pass for you. And then by the end of the Z script, everything will be all over in here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. It does take a couple minutes to go through this whole thing. So I'm not going to bore you with that. So I'm going to pause it, and then I'll be right back when it's done. OK, we're back. Everything has successfully uh, happened there. The Z script is all done, as you can see. It uh, has a little note at the end. Maps are generated. Go to your texture panel to export your maps out and I do always appreciate your purchase of the Greeble pack so a yeah, little thank you to you. Uh, we can go ahead click off that. It's already done everything for us here and now we should have seven new textures in here. You've got a depth, you've got a material ID, you have a normal, a curvature, a AO, diffuse, and then a pretty shaded version. So now all you have to do is start exporting all these guys out. So let's go ahead and I'll just call this material. So and then I'm just going to save them as TIFF files for now. And then export each one of these out. There 
we go. We're all done in here. Uh, we're going to move on over to Substance Painter, and I'm going to show you how to do the basics of uh, using these texture maps inside Painter to make a real quick uh, greebled uh, box and sphere and all that. Okay, so give me just a minute, and we will be over in Substance Painter. All right, here we are inside Substance Painter. We need to open up one of those uh, objects, those new objects I gave you. So we do File, New. We're going to make a document at 2048, because if you remember, Greeple Generator generates at 2048. We can select our, let me go find him real quick, go under Sample Objects, OBJ. We'll just start with Cube 2. It's the simplest one, I believe. Let me see. Let me make sure here. And we want to add all our maps that we made. Recent places, Blue material. And we just need to grab all of these and open them up. And click OK. And zoom out. There we go. And this is just a very basic cube that we can start with. We can uh, get our material all set up, and then we can actually go through our other objects and see which one we we like the best or whatever. Just to give you a couple different ideas. Each one has a different UV set on it. So this one is just a tile UV, so every polygon, because this is just a, a regular uh, cube, doesn't have any additional geometry to it. It's just got its six sides, six polys, and that's it. So let's go ahead and open your textures tab here and we've got our all our maps that we need to plug it into so let's just start with the first one normal plug him right into normal there you go you can see we're already getting a nice uh, effect there and because it is seamless tile it wraps right around it so we'll keep on adding it we'll do our AO ambient occlusion plug him in uh, plug our curve into curvature. Plug our do, 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 material ID. And that is basically all we really need. We don't need the shaded or diffuse. We can, if we wanted, we could, uh, you know, say like this uh, first layer here, you can add a fill and then take out the color, height, roughness and just put in a base color and you can plug in the diffuse that way and as you can see it plugged in all the color information that it sent over so it looks pretty much like it did over in the generator except with some nice shade in now but we're gonna get rid of that for now get rid of that fill for now because we're actually going to use smart materials and if you want you can actually bake your textures out a little bit more here uh, we don't need to do any high poly baking so we just need to turn off normal ID ambient curve and thickness we just need to bake your world space normal and your position and it'll calculate that that'll help out with some of the textures a little bit but not a whole lot. What we actually plugged in is really what we need. So let's go ahead and we're just going to take a smart material. Uh, if you go in your smart material tab, there's uh, you'll have to download this one from the. If you click this little substance share, it'll take you right to the website. Uh, you just uh, sign up for it. It's free, and I and download this T800 metal that's in. Uh, under smart materials tab there and then you can download that and then so I'm just gonna drop it right in there and let's see what what it comes up with pretty cool pretty cool start that we already have and that is just using just the basic information that we sent over from the generator and we're already getting some nice effects so Let's continue on here. Let's go ahead and we're going to add a few extra materials there. Let's go to, I think it's plastic rubber. I'm going to put him right above the metal. 
and then here's where our uh, material ID will come into play. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Oops, there we go. Wrong key. And you can zoom in real close and you can see we got a real nice texture at 2048. So we got that plastic rubber there and all you have to do is go over to the color selection and click pick color and there's our material ID in there so let's go ahead and pick that green we'll pick another color maybe this off purple ish pretty cool we can even add uh, a little colorization get a little different metal in there uh, let's see what bronze armor looks like on him put him on top this one looks like it's a pretty complicated one here let's see how this works alright that, that doesn't look bad so let's go ahead add color selection again we'll zoom in here maybe like this panel here alright so we're going to pick that pink get some nice shading in there and let's add a couple more panels in here maybe this off blue and let's see what else and we'll do this yellow not bad very quick uh, setup of material in here like I said before it probably look a whole it would be a lot more functional inside a program like Substance Designer. So let's go back to the Plastic Rubber. Just because you can uh, adjust the tiling of the normals and ambient occlusion together and make some really neat materials out of it. But this is kind of the, the basics of it doing it through Substance Painter. That's the drawback with Substance Painter, you can't really design the substances themselves, so we're just kind of stuck doing it this way, but it kind of gives you an idea of what you can do with it. So let's go ahead, let me pick one more for the rubber here. No, get rid of that, that's already being used. Maybe this uh, let's do something kind of neat here. Let's see. I want to get some sort of emission going. So let's go ahead and add an emissive and add an opacity. We're going to do two different things here. So first, uh, take that top layer. We're going to drag him to the bottom. We're going to go ahead and add a fill to it we want to turn everything off but opacity okay and real quick go to your viewer settings change your uh, shader to PBR metal rough with alpha blending or this uh, opacity map will not work we're gonna copy this layer and then we're gonna alright just duplicate instead of copy and then drag him all the way up top and then change that fill to black so now he's gone so now put a add a mask with color selection we're going to zoom in to this grid right here that's all that's pretty much all the way in the back of the model of the greeble so all we gotta do is click that black right there boom now we've made him slightly transparent through that grid and as you can see there there was some greebles behind the grid when we generated it pretty cool effect so now we're gonna move on to the we're gonna give some a little bit of glowing make some of the tubing or something here glow so let's go ahead and let's add a new layer just hit that plus add a fill and 
turn everything off, but emissive, change the color, drag, we don't want purple, blue usually works good, just light blue, and then go ahead and add a mass of color selection. See this material ID is coming super handy now. So let's go in here. I don't really want to do the conduit. I think let's see if I have any sort of piping or anything that we can work with. Alright, so let's see. Nope, nope. I don't want him. I want show that blue there. See how that works. That gives a sort of interesting effect there. And of course, you can always erase some of that, uh, that some of that material selection just by adding a paint layer. And let's go ahead and turn, yeah, he's on black. That's what we want. So you can paint right on here, and you can paint some of that off of there. Should make it larger. And then turn, turn up the hardness there. There we go. That's a little, that works a lot better now. And as you can see, it's it's tiled, so everything I do on this one side happens to the other side of the texture. Because say we didn't want that particular panel glowing. We just want those little pipes there glowing. That's the only downside with this material ID. Some of the IDs get really close to the same color. So you just have to go in here and polish it just a little bit. There we go. We got those uh, nice emissive uh, channels in there that will glow pretty cool inside, uh, you know, Sketchfab or however you plan on rendering this thing out. So let's do one more thing. Let's add one more smart material, just to kind of vary it a little bit. So dust, add him right above the bronze armor, and now it'll add a cool little dust material over the whole thing. Pretty cool. So it kind of gives it sort of the aged aged weathered look there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, so say like you want to check this uh, particular uh, material you put together. Uh, we can, you know, just go ahead go to your uh, project configurations and we can change you know we can go to the frame cube we can change that and it'll recalculate everything zoom out and it's going to recalculate everything all I gotta do is just give it a second to reprocess everything and it should come out pretty cool there you go uh, just got to go in and maybe uh, touch up that uh, those panel lines again Oop. just got to find the one it works on here there it is These particular uh, objects that I made, for examples, don't behave like a, a normal uh, UV mapped object, but it's just for demonstration purposes so you can see how this is working.
Oh, it's all right. So uh, if you want, you can check out change your project configuration. We can go to uh, Sphere One. We can check him out. And this is just uh, reusing your uh, textures and materials and everything, but with these objects that have slightly different UV sets on them. So this particular sphere has got, uh, I believe, a cylindrical uh, UV map around it, but it's tiled a little bit. So this particular face in here, as well as back here don't have any UVs and that's why they're blank so but yeah that's basically it uh, how how to uh, do some basic uh, material generation inside substance painter with your uh, greeble textures there uh, hope this has been somewhat educational for you uh, like to get some feedback from you guys. Uh, let me know how you're doing with it. Uh, definitely share your creations with it. I will have some more tutorials in the future with actual modeling inside ZBrush and applying these textures inside there and then getting them back here into Substance Painter to texture uh, to make some nice materials for you. But yeah, definitely uh, get back to me. I appreciate any feedback there. And have fun grieving, guys.